In this video, we're going to look at the ideas of central tendency, in particular, means, mediums, and modes. We'll consider a very simple example. Here we have the weights of five cats, a very small sample. So we're going to look at these five cats and find the mean, the median, and mode in each case. Let's graphically represent the weights of the cats on a number line. Position this first dot at 6.8 for the weight of that cat. The next largest cat has a weight of 7.5. There are two cats with a weight of 8.2. And finally, there's one cat with a weight of 9.4. Now, imagine trying to put a fulcrum here so that it would balance this line with those, uh, with those weights on it. Of course, if we put the fulcrum here, then it would tip to the left. If we moved the fulcrum way over here somewhere, then it's going to start tipping to the right. So we've got to figure out where to put that. I think about right around in here somewhere. Seems like a place to me that this number line would balance. It's a little bit hard. It's just kind of guessing where that is. Now that's the idea of a mean. It has a very, very physical geometric interpretation is it's going to be where this balances um, those numbers on the number line. You have often calculated a mean before. You may have called it an average. We're just going to add up those numbers and divide by how many there are. So there are five numbers. We'll add the numbers up and divide by five. The median, on the other hand, is the middle score. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and we see that they're in order here. The smallest, the next smallest, then there's these 282s and this 94. So the median is the middle score. There's five scores, so it will be the third one from the bottom or the third one from the top. One, two, three, or one, two, three. The median is going to be 8.2. The mode is the number that occurs most often, and that's going to be 8.2 in this case. We'll now look at how R can help us calculate the mean, the median, and the mode. First of all, we've got to get the data into R. We're going to do that by building an object that I'll call x, we could name it anything that we wanted, and then a less than and a minus sign looks like a little arrow. I'm going to store what's on the right-hand side into an object called x. I need to collect this data into what R calls a vector. I'll use the concatenate function, c, to do that. So C is going to take these values. I'll put 6.8, comma, and the rest of the data. This process is sometimes called mungling, munging or wrangling the data. This upper window in R is called the script editor. It will produce results in the, uh, in the console down below here. So if I told R to take this data, store it in an object called X, and then print out what X is, then it simply gives me the, the values of that vector, 6.8, 8.2, 7.5, 9.4, and 8.2. So let's re-edit our script. I'm going to take out that X because I know that R knows what X is. Once the data is stored in an object, there's a lot of things that we can do very quickly and easily. For example, if we want to find the mean, we need to add up these values. 
Let me show you another interesting command in R. It's called uh, sum. If I look at the sum of x, then if I ran that script, then R would take that vector that we've got and sum it up. That it'll just add those values, which is 40.1. You can add those values by hand to verify that that's the right amount. Uh, let's take that total and uh, store it in an object. I'll call it TOT for total. And so now I've got that total. We might also want to know how many items there are in X. We can just count those by hand, of course, because it's such a small set. But if we're looking at a larger set, it might be nice to have a command. The length of X how many items, how long is that vector? I'm going to store that in an object called n. Now that I have those two pieces of information, I can find the, uh, the mean, which is going to be that total, dot, divided by n. So there we are calculating the mean of that data, which is 8.02. You add up the data and divide by how many items are, are in the data set. Now notice the commands that we learned here. We learned the concatenate function, which allowed us to put things into a vector. We learned how to store things into an object for future use. We learned a command called sum, which just added up the values. And we stored that in an object called n, uh, called TOT for total. And uh, we learned a command called length, which tells how many items are in a vector. And that was going to be n. So we could take the total divided by n uh, for the mean. Now, the thing that I want you to know, you will be calculating the mean probably 100 times or more this particular semester. It's nice to know that R has a command called mean of x. If we run that script, then we've calculated the total twice. One, there we are calculating the total as x.02. And secondly, we calculated the mean by using the command mean. And uh, of course, it gets the same thing. So we don't need to to rewrite this particular script, in the future you'll be able to calculate the mean very quickly and easily by, uh, by simply using the command mean. So let me clean up my script here just a little bit. Uh, there we've talked about calculating the mean. Let's sort the data. That's another nice command. Uh, sorting the vector. Let's look and see what that result is. It just puts it in order. Uh, 6.8, 7.5, 8.2, 8.2, and 9.4. So it reordered this from smallest to largest. If we were looking for the median, we'd be looking for the middle score. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I counted 3 from the bottom, 1, 2, 3, that would get me at 8.2. Counted three from the top, one, two, three, it put me at 8.2. 8.2 is the middle score. It is the, the median uh, of this. Now, luckily, R has a command called median of x, and it's smart enough to know how to calculate whether this set is an, has an even number of I items or an odd number of items. So if we run that, the median is 8.2. Very, very handy command. Now, the mode is a little bit more of a problem. R does have a command called mode, but uh, it does not do what uh, we expect the statistics mode to do. See, it just tells us that x is a numeric variable. 
So mode does not work the way we want it to. Here's something that you can do to find the, the mode. <coughs> if you use a command called table, excuse me, table of x, then when we run that command, notice what it does. It tells you that there is one value of 6.8, one value of 7.5, two values of 8.2, and one value of 9.4. We can see by observation that the mode is 8.2. So, what did we learn? We learned how to cantonate a function. We learned how to find the mean of, uh, of a vector of values. We learned how to find the median of a vector of values. And we learned how to use table to be able to visually observe, find out what the mode is. So there you have it, mean, median, mode, central tendency.